Hello and welcome to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO, and actually I'm on the road today here in Enfield, Connecticut at Asnuntuck Community College with my guest Michelle Coach, who's the CEO of Asnuntuck. Thanks for joining me today, Michelle. Thank you for coming here today, Steve. So it's been a while since I've been at Asnuntuck, and in that time I've been here, you've been appointed as the CEO. How does it feel to be the Chief Executive Officer of Asnuntuck? It is amazing. I am so happy to be serving as the CEO at Asnuntuck. I have been here 11 years, and I think of Asnuntuck as my family. I started as an instructor back in 2010, and now to be the CEO, it's been amazing. So tell us a little bit about your background. You were an instructor here, but what did you teach and you know, maybe where you went to school before that? Absolutely. I started here at Isnuntuck uh, back in 2010. I was a biology instructor. I brought microbiology to the campus. We did not have it as a course because I had been a uh, microbiology lab manager and a registered microbiologist back in a previous, a previous career. I was able to bring that information, that expertise, and bring a hands-on, real-life experience into the laboratory. So I taught for several years. Um, I was a department chair. I was a department coordinator. Uh, throughout that time, I then had an interest in looking at leadership. I served as the interim dean for academic affairs for about a year and a half. Uh, during that time, I started my doctorate. So from there, uh, I had the opportunity when President Lumbella moved into the regional president position, I became the interim CEO at Isnantuck, and um, just about a year ago, I finished my doctorate at, from North Central University. Congratulations. And what was your doctorate uh, thesis in? My thesis was in looking at adjunct percentage rates in relation to uh, retention and graduation rates, and looking and seeing if adjunct percentage rates have an effect. And um, I did see some bit of correlation between graduation rates and high, um, high adjunct percentage rates. So uh, in which direction? So the more adjuncts there were, there was higher or lower graduation rates? So in two different states in New England, I found that the higher the percentage of adjuncts, the lower the graduation rate. So there was a negative correlation. Okay. Well, one of the things I think, well, one of the things you didn't say in some of your time here is you were the chief academic officer of the college for a while, and we yes. did that together uh, at our institutions. And, um, but, what, but I think both of us really respect the role and the work of adjunct faculty. They bring so much from the Absolutely. outside. So, um, so it seems almost counterintuitive. You have these people who are really tied to their profession and maybe not making that same level of connection with students based on what you found. Yes, and a lot of it is because of their nomadic way that they work at the college. They're here to teach their class and they leave. Many, you know, especially here, they dedicate themselves to those students. We give them professional development, but a lot of states don't. Um, there's other states, not to be named, but they actually don't provide a lot of professional development and some actually pay a third of what we pay. So between that and not having the chance to, you know, if they're being paid such low wages, they have to teach at multiple locations or do multiple jobs. They can't dedicate their time. We're lucky. We have individuals who really care about our students here. That's true. And do you think that because you were a full-time faculty member at the college, or a long-time teacher, that that really helped inform your work as the chief academic officer and now chief executive officer? Absolutely. I know what's going on in the classroom. So I'm able to really think about when I make a decision, what is this going to do for our students? What is this going to do for our faculty? How are we going to be able to adjust and make it an effective learning experience? Okay. Well, Michelle, it's time for a quick break. Oh, yes. And when we return, more with my guest, Michelle Coach, who's the CEO at Asnunta Community College in Enfield. You're listening to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College here on WLIS WMRD. Your future begins here. At Middlesex Community College, you will find affordable, quality education to land the career of your choice. With over 70 options, make the decision to start now. Visit mxcc.edu to get started today. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO, here on the road in Enfield at Esnantuck Community College with my guest, Michelle Coach, who's the CEO of Esnantuck. And uh, before the break, we were talking about Michelle's background. Michelle, tell us a little more about Esnantuck Community College. So Esnantuck Community College is our third smallest in our CSCU system. We have that family environment that, at this college. Um, if you think of what you would expect as a community college, you've got it here. The students know each other. The students know our faculty, they know our staff. 
when you get here, you're not just a number. You, we're only having in the credit side about 1,800 students. So it's a very intimate, um, personal experience for most of our students. And we have a variety of degrees available from business, general studies, liberal arts. We have an entire manufacturing center in the back um, in a separate building and some in this building. Um, we've got electromechanical, welding, machining in that area. We've got registered medical assisting, the only massage program that's credited in Connecticut. So you name the degree, human services, early childhood, we've got it. So uh, I think students really have an opportunity when they come here to really explore, but then they have classes that they can really invest themselves in. And I think the history of community colleges shows that maybe in the beginning, you know, as what used to be called junior colleges, sort of an extension of the traditional liberal arts tradition uh, has given way to a lot of programs that some that, some that you mentioned that are really career focused or community focused. So how, how does it, how does as Nuntuck kind of discern from the community what's needed out there for academic programs? So we have a lot of program advisory boards. Many of our majors, most of our majors have groups that come together and give them feedback. So I've been to many of those boards and the people in the in the you know, the businesses in our area, they provide ideas of, okay, well, maybe you want to look at this. Maybe you should focus on this. So we try to make our curriculum mirror what is needed in the, um, in the workforce. And this way, we're answering what is needed. Um, I know I've been to where we've said, oh, we need more spreadsheet per classes for a business major. So we went that route. So it's great to involve the community, and we're a community college. So we want the community as part of our college. Yeah. And when you talked earlier about the number of students you have, you used the word credit side. And I think you and I know what that means, yes. but maybe for some of our <laughs> listeners, the difference between credit and non-credit. Um, and you know why some of those things that we today call non-credit are so important as workforce development programs. Absolutely. There's some classes that, some groups of programs that they're not as structured. They may need a little bit more time in different areas. A good example is cosmetology. We have one of the few cosmetology programs in this area. And within 12, 13 months, you have your cosmetology license for Massachusetts and then can apply for Connecticut. So both of them together, you'll be able to take care of just by going to this one program. They're not as structured. They're more of a day program. Um, they're not earning credits. So there's a little bit of exploration that can be happening in some of these programs. And they still have workplace credentials that are received at the end of this. Plus, you know, we have those non-credit courses that are, ex you know, explore other areas. You might want to look at Reiki. You might want to do something about, there's been wine classes. So, you know, special interest courses are also available. And, and one of the programs that bridges both is the manufacturing program. And as Nuntuck really is the leader in the state of Connecticut for the manufacturing side of things. So maybe talk a little more about the kind of facility you have and the manufacturing programs that as Nuntuck offers. Absolutely. We have the flagship manufacturing center here at Isnantuck. Um, we have three major programs. In the machining program, we have many machines. We have an entire machine um, manufacturing floor in our brand new building that's in the back, not even about five years old at this point. Um, when you go back there, you just walk in and say, wow. It allows the students to really get that hands-on experience, and the students are not sharing equipment. They're getting the chance to really work on the equipment. And they're really great when it comes to um, looking at the technology. They'll learn how to do some of these tasks on hand by like the basic tools. Then they'll learn how to do it with a computer and then take it to the next level. And maybe they'll be doing it, have the computer program to do everything. So this way, when they go to a manufacturing facility, they have the capabilities of doing it hands-on, maybe doing it a different way. And we have manufacturers come here to see what we have for equipment because they want to send their students here you know, they'll hire from us, but they'll also send people here to train. So that's a whole nother area, the business and industry, that will train just for those in the public if they need it. Yeah, and it's important for the college to have equipment that looks like a student might see in the industry itself, no matter what Absolutely. that is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So important to have that update, up-to-date equipment. Yeah. And uh, one of the things you were telling me earlier before we started recording was that you went to an event with uh, manufacturing students and just how proud they were of the different parts of uh, the projects they were all working on. Yes, um, I was able to get a chance to really see some of what the students were doing. Um, I've had a couple different events with manufacturing students and manufacturing instructors. They really, you know, they're very proud of themselves. And I love to see it. I love to hear what they're doing. Um, not too long ago, we held a class with high school students and they created rockets. They 3D printed rockets and then they launched them in our backyard. 
<laughs> which was pretty amazing. So they had the chance to really learn how to do SolidWorks, how to use the programming, and then they did the electrical piece of it and created their own launch pads. So pretty amazing. And then, you know, some of our instructors, I had the chance to go through and they gave us examples of what they do in their courses and how important it is to learn hands-on and then take it to the next level. So um, I don't want to focus only on manufacturing. So yes. before we move on from that, I know you are now in a partnership with Tungstis Community College with their new manufacturing center. Correct. How's that going? It's going really well. Their manufacturing center is coming to fruition, um, but it will be six months to a year at this point before they can offer classes there. So the plan is they have their students come to us to do the hands-on piece. They're still Tungstis Community College students, They'll take some of their courses there, but then when it comes to hands-on, they can come here and they get that experience. So they're still getting that full breadth of um, programming. Okay. And that's kind of a step in the direction of this merger of all the community yes. colleges, isn't it? So Tungsus and Nuntuck are part of the Northwest region. Yes. Okay. And we're now all parts of region. So who else is in the, the Northwest region? We also have Nagatuck Valley and Northwestern. Um, and we share several different individuals in the regional uh, staffing. Right. So um, how do you see that as an advantage for students? I mean, the one example you just gave was manufacturing students, but what are some other ways that students can take advantage of what the colleges have to offer because of these collaborative efforts? We've had a couple different things that we've done. Um, we are offering some programs through continuing education that are offered at Tungsis. So we have our students registering here, but they're technically taking it at a different college. So they're allowing them to really share some programs. A good example of that is the paralegal program. So they're getting the chance to really get experiences. Plus, throughout our region, we're staggering the start of our programs. So then if they miss the start here, maybe they can take it at the next school. And it's allowing us to really work together to come up with some great strategies for our students so they can start when they need to. And also for the faculty, because uh, didn't the region also have a regional um, job fair for uh, young yes, faculty? Yes, okay. we did. We had a regional job fair. We were able to um, offer out to see who wanted to become an adjunct. We held it with um, all the different areas and the deans were present and they were able to get you know some applications and we'll be hosting one coming up, it looks like in the near future. We're in the planning phase. Alrighty. So another thing that's happened in as Nuntuck in the last couple of years is some physical changes, some uh, additions and improvements. Um, they all seem to be centered on student success. Um, so talk a little more about like what a student's experience is when they come to Esnantuck and see this. Absolutely. When you walk in those front doors of Esnantuck, you're welcomed by this glass structure that's called the Tower Lobby. And it's bright, it's shining, it's smiling, and you can see our bookstore right on the side, and you're welcomed by our security officers. In this time of COVID, it's always tricky, you know. So our security officers are there at the door, checking, making sure you have your mask on, making sure you're social distancing, and they'll point you to where you need to go. They're very welcoming, they're very pleasant. Um, and when you walk down the halls, you're gonna see people saying hi, welcoming you wherever you are. Um, we've had many different additions to that tower lobby area. Um, our bookstore, as I just mentioned, is brand new. We have Arnie's Corner Cafe. Uh, so we have food here every single day, and he is coming back even though it's COVID. <laughs> we have our own conference center. We have upstairs a brand new, um, it's a glass conference room that we have that students can, uh, can meet in. There's a uh, student government meeting area as well upstairs. So we're lucky that whole area was brought on. Um, we've been doing improvements in all different areas, putting in new classroom uh, furniture upstairs. Every single classroom has new tables, new chairs, um, new blinds. So we're working to make sure that the, they have their best educational experience. Right. And, and pretty soon, as Nantuck, we'll be getting what we call Guided Pathways Advisors, which is a new initiative as well to help our students. Absolutely. We will be bringing on many more advisors. We will have nine staff in our advising office. We'll have a campus advising lead, a Guided Pathway 2 advisor, and then seven different Guided Pathways advisors. Currently, we have four advisors. So this is going to bring us to a different level and really be able to work with the students and understand where they are in their programs and make sure they stay on their programs. And really, as it says, guide them on their pathway through college. And, and I would think more personalized attention too because there's more professionals, they each would have fewer students to work with too, right? Exactly. We're working on that 1 to 250 ratio. So only 250 students to one advisor. So they can really do that, you know, close attention. Plus, they can guide them to any services they need. We have a pantry here on campus and in our wellness center. Um, we have a new initiative that will be coming out. We'll talk about, um, I think it's called Talk Campus. There's a mental health um, new program that will be coming our way coming up in this fall. 
Um, so lots of different opportunities for our students because this individual, this advisor, is going to know them. Yeah. And I also saw when we were walking through earlier uh, the American Job Center, which is an outpost of the uh, workforce uh, development boards, right? Absolutely. So they have people, individuals coming to the American Job Center all the time, looking for employment, learning how to make their resume. We have resources here and individuals that will help when it comes to um, employment. But we also have, you know, a lot available through the American Job Center. They have a lot of different workshops that they can provide. Plus, um, you know, they're always willing to send people our way to, you know, maybe somebody wants to utilize the classes that we have here. And they're right across from our continuing education office. Super. Well, time for another short break. All right. Well, when we come back, more with my guest, Michelle Coach, who's the CEO of Esnuntuck Community College in Enfield. You're listening to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College here on WLIS WMRD. I had no idea that I wanted to go into manufacturing when I was younger. I really didn't have an interest in anything like it until I was a junior in high school and I finally got a shop class that I'd been trying for and I loved it. And then my senior year of high school I ended up taking four shop classes and my shop teachers really pushed me to tour as an tuck They told me it was a great program. I went right from my senior year, graduated, had the summer off and then started in the fall here. I chose as an tuck because it was a really good fit for me. We have great facilities here, it's affordable, and it's a very positive setting. Everyone seems very upbeat. I made a lot of friends, they're all really nice. Everyone in the program has been so welcoming that I've never felt scared to ask questions and reach out when I do need help. I'm currently in an internship at Senior Aerospace Connecticut. I am an estimator and we look at incoming parts from customers and school has helped me a lot even though I'm not on the shop floor. All the knowledge that I've learned as far as machining does apply to my job. The biggest challenge I think every day is being the only girl. It's definitely made me a stronger person. So if you're a woman and you want to go into this field or any field that's male dominant, I think that you should go for it. But you won't know the success that you can have until you try it. Well, as Nantuck itself has helped me accomplish my goal because they placed me in the internship. They pushed me and showed me that you can get a real job in a year. You can establish your life in a year. And I have. Well, this is a really good choice for me. I definitely fit my best skills into this trade. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO, actually on the road today here in Enfield, Connecticut at Asnuntuck Community College with its CEO, Michelle Coach. And thanks again for joining me today, Michelle. Um, we've been talking about the various programs that Asnuntuck has to offer, and one of the ones that really kind of struck my interest, you went by it kind of quickly, is massage therapy. First, how can I become a patient in that program? <laughs> but more importantly, what, um, you know, that is really tied to some of what you're hearing at the college about what the community needs, and programs like massage and others that are in the general healthcare environment are also uh, in demand at this point. So what's happening here at Asnuntuck? Absolutely. So a couple years ago, massage therapy was in continuing education. It was a very successful program. So we brought it to the credit side. Um, massage therapists have a difficult time getting insurance if they don't have a degree. So we found they can. some of these individuals will now qualify for uh, Pell for different ways in which to financially you know, provide for their degrees. And they can get the massage therapy program at the same time. So we have the program already brought over to to the credit side. Um, within there, they have their own massage room and they learn all the different skills of massage. And if you are if you come here for $25, we have clinics and you get an hour massage. Oh, okay. That was, answers my question. Yes. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think after this uh, COVID era running colleges like we do, I think a massage would uh, do well. Absolutely. Um, but it kind of gets back to something we talked about before with the difference between credit and non-credit. And I guess a quick definition 
maybe we agree on would be non-credit is typically shorter term direct into the workforce programs that tip could have a credential. Absolutely. But aren't traditionally eligible for financial aid. Correct. So we found that we took a couple programs and moved them over to the credit side, then they are financial aid eligible. Um, we did this with phlebotomy tech, uh, registered medical assisting, and the coding class. So we, um, coding classes, we've had that chance to really bring them over and be successful. Our registered medical assisting program is extremely successful, and we have multiple cohorts right now going through. Okay. Um, so for students who, you know, maybe they can get Pell Grants or other financial aid, I think another aspect of financial assistance we give them is uh, scholarships that typically people like you and me uh, would help raise money through our foundations. Absolutely. So this touches a little bit about our role as CEOs. And uh, I think one of the things that we are expected to do is to work with our foundations and work with the community. How have you found that part of your job to be? Is, is that exciting for you? And what have you been up to in that part of your job? I find it truly enjoyable. I love going out into the community and learning about what these businesses are, what they offer, and who they are. I've been at ShopRite bagging groceries next to individuals. Um, we were just doing a benefit for there a couple years ago before COVID. COVID made it a little difficult to get out in the community, but I've been at Rotary meetings. I've been at Chamber of Commerce meetings. Just recently, we did a golf tournament, two golf tournaments and they um we had so many different groups from the community i was able to meet with them hear about their thought their thoughts about programming and needs and really it was able to get us you know get to work with others and find out what can we do as a community college another great uh experience that i had before we shut down, Enfield hosted their uh, legislative breakfast here. They had the governor here, and they had the chance to really show what does Enfield bring to the community, what is out there in Enfield. And the governor was overjoyed to be here and to talk to them and really experience, you know, as Nuntuck at the same time as hearing about the, the wonderful things about his Enfield area. Sure. And Enfield being only a couple miles from the Massachusetts border, uh, yes. what kind of incentives do you have for students to jump the border? Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, <laughs> dare to cross the line. Ah, okay. So Massachusetts residents pay Connecticut prices. It's really wonderful. So right now we have about 10% of our population are Massachusetts residents. And um, really, we are three miles from the Massachusetts border. So, you know, people think, oh, Connecticut. Well, we're not that far. You know, we're, I live in Massachusetts, and it's only 25 minutes away. I live in the Westfield Southwick area. So it's closer for me to drive here than it is for any of the other community colleges. Yeah, so great advantage in a way for other students to be able to find us Nuntuck and our community colleges. Exactly. Yeah. We are right off of exit 48 on 91. Yep. So. so, yeah, almost the last exit in Connecticut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, another program uh, you've actually been a leader at in, in our system, I think, in, as Nuntuck and Middlesex both have programs in prisons or, or involve incarcerated individuals. So talk a little about um, what's been known as the Second Chance Pell program here at Nuntuck. Thank you for bringing up Second Chance Pell. We've had the privilege of being in five different prisons. Um, right up the road from us, there are actually now four. They closed one of them. Um, and we offer students human services, uh, business ed degrees and general studies. At one point we were actually offering manufacturing courses and they were here on our campus Friday nights and Saturday mornings. So we had the chance to really work with the students and um, we're continuing that program. Even through the shutdown, we were able to get a grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and we brought technology to the prisons. We were doing classes through teams with the prisoners, allowing them to continue that education because we know it's important to them. And it's that incentive. When they come out, they're going to have a credential that will help them get employed and it will help their families and everyone and, you know, encourage them to keep keep striving. Yep. How many students do you have in that program? At one point, we were up to almost 300. This semester, it's about 130. Okay. And, and it is all in the prison right now. Yes, we got okay. the thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, the DOC is only at this point having higher education in the right. prisons. They are not having any other programs at, at this time. Right. And similar with Middlesex and our program together with Wesleyan at two prisons. Um, but we're looking at doing remote instruction like you are. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think we together have seen uh, reports that we've heard from DOC have talked about just an improvement in prison oh, yes. behavior and uh, recidivism is down. People, you know, once they uh, come home from prison, don't go back. Because exactly. Now some... And it's huge. And plus, we've seen them continue their education. I, um, I met a couple students. 
they've gone on from just community college, they've gone on to, you know, four-year schools. I, I talked to one, I gave him a uh, recommendation to Columbia not too long ago, and he already had two, two patents, two businesses that he was running. So, you know, it's amazing what we can do and help them to bring them to a different, you know, to different level, because some of them are getting into our honor society. I have been in the prisons, I've done graduations, and I've inducted them into Phi Theta Kappa. And that combination, you know, to see the pride on their faces, in their families' faces, it, it just, there's nothing like it. Absolutely. And you brought up another topic I was going to ask you about, which is Phi Theta Kappa. Something else you've been a leader at here in the Community Colleges of Connecticut. So what is Phi Theta Kappa? And talk about your involvement in that over the last few years. Absolutely. Phi Theta Kappa is the largest two-year honor society that we have in the world. Um, it's across our entire nation, thousands and thousands of chapters. Uh, we have 53 in New England, and my position is the New England Regional Coordinator. So I work with those 53 chapters, and we have the Associate Regional Coordinator on this campus as well. So we really get to work with them. We work with regional officers. And our campus two years ago was the, the fourth uh, in fourth place for the most distinguished chapter in the world. So we were pretty proud of that. I mean, they work really hard and it's the experiences that they get that, um, you know, working with each other, when you hear a student say, you know, the best part of working with these other students is writing a report about a project, you wonder, writing a report, they just love working with each other and they work towards a common goal. They research things. They're making a difference in society. And it's not just, oh, they're in an honor society. They take it to a whole different level. And in my role as regional coordinator, I get to work with not just them here at our campus, I get to work with all around New England and I've served as a faculty scholar. So I've worked with individuals from all over the world, um, leading in different conferences. And I'm also the, um, I'm the past chair, so the outgoing chair for the ACA, which is the Association for Chapter Advisors for Phi Theta Kappa. So I represent all of Division One. Yeah, so it's a great opportunity for faculty and staff at the colleges to have leadership themselves, you know, to work with students in a, in a much uh, more intense and purposeful way. Uh, the students themselves, I think the projects you're talking about typically have to benefit the college in some way, right? Absolutely. There's two different projects that they can do. They can do the college project, which is done with administration. And it is really cool to sit down with those students and they say, so what can we do for you? What, what can we do for the college mission? What can we achieve for you? And we work on projects and create something that will work from an ambassador program to open house to orientation sessions. You name it, they are, they are willing. The other one is a research-based project and they're willing to do that research even though they're not getting the grade on it. And it, gets, it becomes really exciting because they research something and some type of service action comes out of it. So we've seen some amazing actions happen on the campus. Yeah, and those students, are, if um, they can also submit those projects for national recognition. Absolutely. And that's happened in, in Connecticut. Some of our projects have gotten that far. Yes, and we've, you know, originally when I first became New England Regional Coordinator about five, six years ago, we were in the back. Once in a while, we get an award. Now, I mean, we were on the stage for the top 10 the last two years. CCRI, Community College of Rhode Island, was on the stage last year for being one of the most distinguished chapters. So it's great. New England is coming on strong. And um, we have a great camaraderie amongst the advisors and amongst the students. Mm -hmm. I would say so. And those students, if they're in PTA, PTK, also have access to information about scholarships. for the Absolutely. I tell individuals that they really need to think about it. If they get an invitation to Phi Theta Kappa, that is wonderful. Actually, I was talking to my son's girlfriend the other day. She is interested in a four-year school. If she comes to community college, joins PTK, she gets a $10,000 scholarship to this school that she wants to go to. That is quite expensive, but just for being a member, she gets $10,000. So they have a great thing called PTK Connect, and it's right on there. You can look at all the colleges and see what they give for scholarships. They also have programs that will help you gain soft skills. They have other programs. Um, they'll have you go on different, uh, they have conferences. We have conferences all over the United States that we, uh, we have students go to every year. Last year, most were virtual, but um, coming up, we will be hopefully be back in person in the Amazing. spring. Amazing. So we've touched on a lot of things. Yes. Can't touch on all of them in a half an hour, but you are so involved uh, with everything happening as, at Asnuntuck. And what do you do to unwind when you're not here in your <laughs> office or on campus? Well, 
I tend to work out. That's my thing. I have to start my day every day. I go to this CrossFit gym that's not even five minutes from my house. And, you know, I start the day off. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, head down to that gym. And um, I, have a, I have a family there, too. We call them our, my swarm family. And, you know, there's nothing like, you know, deadlifting 250 pounds of the first thing in the morning and then coming to work. So <laughs> that and I spend time with my family, of course, because I have a son, daughter and husband. So. Right. So, so yeah, so it's, it's a great to have that balance, a, a positive work life and friends and exercise or whatever, and your family as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So on that note, thank you very much, Michelle Coach, CEO of Esnantuck Community College for joining me today. Thank you. Great chatting with you. And Michelle, if somebody wants to know more about Esnantuck, how can they find you on the web? Well, you can go to www.esnuntuck.edu, and okay. they can, you can find all the information. Or they can always visit you here on campus in Enfield. Absolutely. We are back open to the public. All right. Well, thanks again, and thank you, our listeners, for tuning in for another edition of Middlesex Moments. You can visit us at Middlesex Community College at our main campus, 100 Training Hill Road in Middletown, our Meriden Center at Platt High School, where we offer courses four nights a week, or certainly you can visit us 24-7 at mxcc.edu. On behalf of everybody at Asnuntuck Community College and Middlesex Community College, I'm Steve Minkler, and we'll see you next week.